Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we will be producing some dioxane from ethylene glycol via the acid-catalyzed dehydration of ethylene glycol from antifreeze. Dioxane is a very useful solvent for many reactions and always good to have on hand. To begin, a large jug of concentrated antifreeze was purchased from a hardware store. The ingredients listed should only be ethylene glycol. 2,500 milliliters of ethylene glycol was then added to a 3 liter Erlenmeyer flask, followed by 250 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. This is slightly impure 93% sulfuric acid from drain cleaner, however this pure sulfuric acid that we distilled in a previous video could also be used. A simple distillation apparatus was assembled, and the mixture was heated. As the reaction temperature increased, it slowly darkened and then turned black as material began to distill over. The sulfuric acid first dissociates to give hydronium ions its solution. As the reaction progresses, a hydronium ion protonates the electronegative oxygen of the ethylene glycol. Another ethylene glycol oxygen displaces a water molecule from the protonated ethylene glycol, reforming the hydronium ion and forming diethylene glycol. These steps are repeated using the oxygens from each end of the diethylene glycol to give the final cyclic ether 1,4-dioxane. Because dioxane and water both boil below the boiling point of ethylene glycol, the distillation removes the reaction products and drives the reaction forward. The reaction generates a black mess of tar as well, and unfortunately it was not paying close enough attention, and the tar splashed over a bit. The heating should be stopped once the tar begins foaming, however it is necessary to clean up the products anyhow, so a bit of tar splashing over is not the end of the world. With the initial reaction completed, some sodium hydroxide and acetone was first used to remove the tar from the distilling flask, the crude dioxane was re-added to the distilling flask with an additional 250 milliliters of sulfuric acid drain cleaner, and it was set up for a fractional distillation. One of the side products formed is 2-methyl-1,3-dioxalane, which is hydrolyzed in the presence of sulfuric acid and water to form ethylene glycol and acetaldehyde for easier separation. As the temperature increased, everything that distilled over below 85 degrees Celsius was collected and set aside. 150 milliliters of low boiling point side products were obtained, and interestingly, they formed two immiscible layers. One of the side products is likely acetaldehyde formed from the dehydration of the ethylene glycol, but I'm not sure what else would be present with it. Once the temperature reached 85 degrees Celsius, the receiving flask was swapped out and the dioxane water azeotrope was collected. The distillation was continued until the temperature rose above 90 degrees Celsius, and then the apparatus was allowed to cool. Dioxane forms a constant boiling azeotrope consisting of 18% water, which boils at 87.6 degrees Celsius. This means that the two compounds can't be separated further using only distillation. To further purify the dioxane, 600 grams of sodium hydroxide was added in a large beaker. Sodium hydroxide can be purchased as lye from hardware stores. The sodium hydroxide dissolves water present in the solution and forms a separate layer at the bottom. The dioxane was left stirring for an hour or so to allow complete removal of water, and then the upper dioxane layer was decanted into the distilling flask. Once again, a fractional distillation apparatus was set up, and pure dioxane distilled over around 101 degrees Celsius. In the end, 794 grams of dioxane was obtained, corresponding to a 40.5% yield based on the starting ethylene glycol. Dioxane has a melting point just a bit below room temperature, so as the dioxane cooled, it began crystallizing. This dioxane still likely contains a bit of water, however it is hygroscopic and I will not be using it for a while, so I will fully dry it as necessary in the future. To dry it, lithium, sodium, or potassium metal can be used to sequester remaining water. As a quick note of caution, ethers can form explosive peroxides on exposure to light and oxygen. To prevent the formation of explosive peroxides, the dioxane should be stored under some sodium hydroxide and in an amber glass bottle. Additionally, dioxane is carcinogenic, so the use and preparation must be done in a well-ventilated area. We will use this dioxane as a solvent for some upcoming reactions, so it's good to have on hand. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future project. Okay, bye.